Galwaf Kalithid Kenneth Lathol Cymru Drevon, an item in questionary brief for Nidog, and question in Green Up Your Way. Dwi'n chymru iawn, llywydd. A wnaeth y prif wnidog ddatsganiad am effaith toriadau cyllid ar y gwasanaeth iechyd yn logwedd Cymru? Wn i diw cyllideb refeniw y gwasanaeth iechyd wedi cael eu thori. Lle mae yna wasgu ar gyllidebau yn lleol, da ni'n gwybod bod hynny'n digwydd, a lle mae yna felly wasgu ar wasanaethau. Mae'n bwysig cach nag eri oed yn dydy bod ganddo ni'r meddygon gora posib er mwyn uh, rhoi y gwasanaeth gora posib i gleifion. A nhw chi, brif wynidog, groes sawi y camam a prif ysgol bangor uh, wedi cymryd mewn cydweithrediad a chyr ferill i sicrhau bod na rhagor o gyfleon yn y dyfodol i Gymru i fancastudio meddygaeth, yma yng Nghymru a gwneud hynny o fewn i milltu'r sgwar lle mae'n bosib er mwyn mynd i'r afael ar problemau recrutio sy'n gandaf. Wrth gwrs, a mwyn yn rhan wrth gwrs o strategaeth y llywodraeth, sef wrth gwrs i recrutio mwy o bobl i ystudio yng Nghymru a, a i gyd sefyll yng Nghymru fod meddygon, ac wrth gwrs i dynnu meddygon profiadol mewn i Gymru i weithio yn y gwasanaeth iechyd. Ac wrth gwrs ni'n croesawu'n fawr iawn, unrhyw camau sy'n cael eu gymryd er mwyn sicrhau ddau nod hynny. Anne Jones. Um, thank you, President Officer. First Minister, NHS trusts in England have seen a, a 20, million, 20 billion pound reduction in funding due to the, the uh, under the masterhood of the Conservatives who are in, in ru ruling over there, and that's led to 4,500 fewer nurses on those wards. Whilst here in Wales, I think we have to say that nurse numbers have remained stable, and with an extra 10 million pound that your government has uh, said that they will put in, we hope to see nurse places. Uh, increase. What more can your Welsh Government do, uh, First Minister, to ensure that we have the proper and appropriate number of clinical staff, especially across North Wales, where historically it has been difficult to recruit, given the medical centre being based in Cardiff? Members will be aware, of course, of the uh, medical recruitment uh, programme and the fact, of course, that uh, uh, there have been, as the member has said, many thousands of nurses who have lost their jobs in England. That has not happened uh, in Wales. Uh, we uh, prize, of course, the NHS uh, in Wales, and we have provided the appropriate resources in order for it to be able to deliver in the future. Darren Miller. Thank you, uh, Presiding Officer. First Minister, you suggested that the NHS isn't having its budget cut uh, here in Wales, but we know that in terms of real-term budget cuts, it's had the biggest in its history and faces an uphill struggle for the next few years because of the record-breaking cuts which your government is imposing. And one of the services which is under pressure as a result of that in North Wales and elsewhere is the Child and Adolescent Mental Health uh, Service, which of course has experienced very long delays uh, in waiting times for children needing access uh, to support. In fact, some experts have been claiming uh, that uh, services across Wales are currently operating at between 20 and 40 per cent of the recommended staffing levels. What work is your government going to do to ensure that people can have timely access to interventions from uh, the Child and Adolescent Mental Health Service when they need them? Well, first of all, of course, I refute the allegations he makes about record-breaking cuts. I, I wonder sometimes whether he's going to be replaced by a parrot on the benches uh, opposite who do the same job. The reality is that, as he well knows, some £620 million extra has been put into the NHS budget at a time when his own government is cutting funding to, uh, to Wales. I know it's painful for him, but he needs to listen. He asked specifically about CAMS. In October, the Health Minister announced uh, an extra £250,000 annually, ensuring more young people are cared for in Wales. And, of course, the mental health measure allows many more patients to be seen in primary care, meaning, of course, that CAMS services can concentrate on treating the most complex cases. And £3.5 million was invested in this new service, and more than 30,000 people, indeed, uh, were assessed up to December of last year. Ayad Roberts. Prif Wynidog, mae adroddiad pwyllgod cyfrifon cyhoeddus yn dangos bod uh, bwrdd iach chi Betsy Cadwallad y wedi lle hai i diffig o ddiwedd mis naw uh, in deg 3 miliwn i ddiwedd mis deg 7.5 miliwn, gystyniad o ryw 5.5 miliwn mewn mis. Mae yna uh, berson wedi cysylltu o fi ddoi yn deud bod i thriniaeth hi um, yn ysbyty glan clwyd wedi cael ei gohirio a bod yr ysbyty wedi deud bod holl triniaethau dyddiol yn yr ysbyty wedi gohirio ar gyfer mis mawrth. Ydy'r llywodraeth yn ymwybodol o hynny a fysych chi fel llywodraeth yn cadarnhau bod y fath um, bolisi gan bwrdd iechyd Betsy Cadwallader yn dderbyniol? 
Well, of course, we are on the Royal North of Varning Lean, as of a in Gol in here, but of course, if it's here, he gied on even, of course, he bob out the dot, he bob bored Yechid Leol, he's sick at high, but when I think I know they get a note and a stud of Louis and Ariano, and when sick at high, but in Cario, Simon Blan get a loud Jenny at the Delano. Question two, Jenny Rathbone. What can the Welsh Government do to mitigate the impact of the bedroom tax? Well, we have implemented a number of initiatives, including making available an additional £1.3 million to Welsh local authorities to add to their discretionary housing payments funds. First Minister, you'll be aware that a tribunal um, in Mon Montgomeryshire, at Monmouthshire has decided that uh, bedrooms used as a study and an art room are not counted as bedrooms whereas a tribunal in Cardiff has decided the opposite. And I wondered how uh, the government can help elucidate what is the real situation of this very poor legislation. Well, it, it illustrates the, the mess that uh, reigns as a result of the introduction of this uh, policy, the fact that there is inconsistency in different parts of Wales. Uh, what I can say, of course, is that the, uh, th there is a possibility of appeal to the upper uh, tribunal. Uh, but it shows that this policy was ill thought out, uh, ill conceived and ill implemented as evidenced by the fact that there is a complete lack of consistency as the member has said uh, in terms of the way it has been implemented across Wales. Mark Isherwood. Yeah. And of course Labour introduced this policy for housing benefit recipients in the private rented sector in 2008. But given that the DWP guidance was issued to every local authority in March 2011, again in July 2012, on discretionary housing payments, and this said that disabled people in uh, adapted accommodation or reliance on local support networks should be prioritised for discretionary housing payments, we know that Welsh Government figures showed that only three out of 22 local authorities had spent even half of the discretionary housing payments halfway through the financial year, even though unspent money has to go back to the Treasury at the end of the year. Uh, why is that, and what are you doing to ensure that that money is going to where it should be going, uh, rather than being returned to the Treasury? Well, as a matter of course for local authorities to ensure that they uh, get the money out of the door, as uh, they have been asked to do. But I can say the demand for discretionary housing uh, payments in 15 local authorities in the first half of the financial year that we are in now has increased by around 260% compared to the same period a year earlier. Uh, that tells us, of course, that there is immense hardship out there because of the introduction of the bedroom tax. And it is a policy that the party opposite continues to defend, despite the effect it has on many people who are working, despite the effect it has on, the effect it has on many people who are disabled, despite the incredible consistency with which it is interpreted. And at the, at the end of the day, it was nothing more Nothing more than an attempt to have a go and to degrade those who have the least incomes while leaving those with the greatest incomes untouched. We shouldn't be surprised. That's what the party opposite stand for. Jocelyn Davis. Thank you, President Officer. Uh, First Minister, the Monmouthshire case, of course, decided that a room needs to be furnished as and used as a bedroom before it could be considered as such. So tenants winning appeals at a tribunal. Now, these appeal decisions must be relayed to other tenants in similar circumstances so that it can be, they can avoid this spiteful policy. So what are you doing to ensure that uh, tenants across the country are getting this information so that they can appeal against those decisions by their local authority? The difficulty is, of course, that these are lower tribunal decisions and they're not binding on subsequent appeals. So what is decided in one local authority by one tribunal does not necessarily have to be followed by tribunals elsewhere. The only way to resolve it is there to be better guidance from DWP so there's a better understanding of how to apply the law. Sadly, that hasn't been forthcoming. Peter Black. Thank you, uh, Sally Officer. First Minister, you know I'm not um, a fan of the bedroom tax in its present form, but of course we do want to um, put in place provisions to try to alleviate its impact. And the um, Mark issue has already referred to the issue with discretionary housing payments. The vast majority of Welsh councils, when they assess a, a, a um, a claimant for discretionary housing payments are taking into account disabled living allowance and child benefits as income, something which the, which the DWP does not do itself. Is there any way the Welsh Government can give advice to those councils to tell them that this is not the way they should be going forward and that we and these payments for disabled living allowance and for child benefits are therefore completely different issues and should not be taken into account as, as part of the 
further income? Well, we'll see what we can do in order to counter the lack of information that's come from the UK government, which ultimately, of course, is responsible for this policy. But I, mean, I think we should bear in mind that even with discretionary housing payments, the allocation is £6.2 million. The bedroom tax costs £23 million per year. So there is no way that the discretionary housing payments uh, system can actually make up for the loss that there is to Wales as a result of these changes and as a result of so many hard-working families being hammered by the Conservatives. I can now question I gan Arwen Mir a Plediai and and Gunta Penown Emma Arwen is the Osplaid Andrew Archie David. Thank you, uh, Presiding Officer. Uh, First Minister, do you think that the January GCSE English results were an injustice to young people in Wales? There is a review that is taking place. It appears from the initial uh, investigation that around 16% of schools were affected. I use that word injustice because it was quite clearly used by the previous education minister when the last great debacle happened back some 18 months ago, when he actually used the words to ensure that such an injustice does not happen in the future, and he went on then to fill out his argument. The association, the head of the Association of School and Colleges Leaders said that there has been a wheelbarrow load of evidence that is already pointing to systemic failure in the system. What is bemusing a lot of people is how this situation was allowed to occur. It has knocked the confidence of learners, it has knocked the confidence of teachers, and when you have the chief executive of the WJC saying that the government should now pause on its reform of the qualification system, do you not think that you should start listening to such senior people in the education establishment so that the learners going forward can have confidence that they're gonna be given a fair crack of the whip? I mean, if Michael Gove uh, actually did that, I'm sure education in England would be in a far better place. He meddles and interferes with every opportunity. Uh, what has happened, of course, is that, one, is that one unit with regard to English GCSE has been affected. From what we understand, it is a minority of schools that have been affected. It is right to say that the rigour of that unit has been improved so that spelling and grammar now count for more in terms of the marking system than was the case before, something I'm sure that he would actually welcome. But nevertheless, as I've said, there is a review, um, a quick review that's being uh, taken forward, and I know that the Minister will give further details of that in the uh, urgent question that uh, will come after my questions. First Minister, 81 schools have been affected by uh, the calamity, I would say, that happened last week to their cohort taking these uh, exams. Uh, It has knocked, as I said, learners' confidence just on the eve of their main summer exams. It has knocked the confidence of the teachers who have obviously been teaching the modules. There have been, and there is, critical evidence out there that shows that the information to schools was slow in being made available through the modules as it progressed, arriving in the schools in October and November 2012. We saw a decline from a 23% pass of grade C to a 5% pass of grade C. That's an 18% reduction. Now, when the chief executive of the WJEC talks as he does, the most senior person within that examination board, you say you base your health reforms on the advice you receive from senior clinicians and therefore we should listen to them. Shouldn't your government start listening to the education lists who do want to improve Welsh education and install confidence in our learners rather than putting through the debacle that you put them through last week? I mean, really. Coming from a man whose party wants to cut education funding by 20%, I do find these things quite remarkable. And the, the amnesia, the sheer amnesia that exists on the benches opposite is, is quite astounding at times. They must think the Welsh public are stupid. But the reality is that is what his party wants to do, and he talks about raising standards. I make no apology for raising the standards of GCSE English. I make no apology for ensuring that spelling and grammar are examined in the way that they should, and I'm sure the Welsh public would support that. We stand for higher standards. He stands for diluted standards. Order. Gracious me. Our winners, Plaid Cymru, Leanne Wood. Diolchlywydd. First Minister, I know that you will agree with me that although International Women's Day is an annual event, that we should work every day to ensure that issues of concern to women remain on the political agenda. Now, yesterday, two Welsh police officers were dismissed for failing to properly follow up complaints of sexual assaults on domestic abuse survivors by another officer. Now, although policing is not devolved, 
What action will you and your government take to make sure that lessons are learned from this case? Well, of course, as the Leader of Plaid Cymru will know, uh, we have the uh, Violence Against Women and Domestic Abuse Bill, which, will be, which is being taken through the Assembly, will be introduced in June, and that will be an opportunity for us to examine issue, issues such as this uh, and strengthen the law where we can within our devolved competence to make sure that, uh, as she rightly says, uh, that International Women's Day is not just one day a year, but it's something uh, that is uh, mainstreamed uh, every day of the year. Thank you very much for your answer, First Minister. Now, I know that proposals for legislation on domestic abuse will consider how public bodies can work together in order to reduce such abuse. Now, one proposal is to create an advisor with a statutory role to work with public bodies and government. Could such a role work, even though policing isn't yet devolved? Yes, it could. Uh, there are many ways, of course, in which abuse can be uh, avoided. Uh, and that means, of course, looking at social services, looking at advice services. Uh, in many ways, uh, when abuse comes to the uh, attention of the police and the prosecuting authorities, in many ways it's gone too far. Yeah. And so what we want to do is, within our devolved competence, ensure that as much is done uh, before things get to that stage to avoid abuse in the first place. But welcome your response there, First Minister, and Plaid Cymru would support your view that prevention is always better than cure. We agree uh, as well that early intervention and education are crucial in this debate. There's been some concern recently about evidence uh, about attitudes towards sexual harassment and sexual violence. What interventions can your government take within the education system in order to help to create healthier attitudes towards gender equality and towards sexual relationships? Well, I would hope, of course, that this forms part of what schools are teaching in their PSE uh, courses, particularly ensuring that the children that they, uh, that they produce through the school system are not just well-educated in the academic sense, but well-rounded individuals uh, as well. And I know that many schools make a great effort to ensure that it, well, they, they all make a great effort to ensure that equality particularly uh, is seen as exceptionally important, be that uh, racial equality or sexual uh, equality. Uh, and I'm very glad to see the examples that I've seen in schools around Wales of uh, schools delivering on that agenda. Akinola, Arwenna, uh, Democrat, Reese Rudd, Cymru, Kirsty Williams. Thank you, Presiding Officer. First Minister, last year the NUT surveyed its members, asking them about their experience of the new literacy and numeracy tests introduced by your government. Uh, unfortunately, the survey results don't make for very positive reading. Do you think the literacy and numeracy tests have been a positive experience for pupils? 93% of the teachers who responded to the survey said no. Uh, do you think the tests have provided any new information about the pupils you teach that is not provided by teacher assessments? 92% of teachers who responded said no. First Minister, if you can't carry the profession with you, how on earth can you expect these tests to make the difference in literacy and numeracy that our school children so desperately need? I'm a parent and I welcome the tests. I know many, many others did as well, because for the first time I was able to understand objectively how my children were doing. It may well be there are some in the profession who don't like it, but the tests are staying. I want to make sure that we're able to assess how children are doing. I want to make sure that teachers are able to benchmark their own grading of children against a more objective benchmark. It's helpful for them as well. But I believe very strongly that parents have very much welcomed the literacy and numeracy tests in order to provide an idea of how children are progressing through school. The question I asked First Minister is what were you doing as government to ensure that the profession felt the same way because clearly from this survey they don't. Now last week we did see unexpectedly low results from the new English language GCSE exams that your government have introduced in a lot of Welsh schools. Now the WJC have said that some schools appear to have struggled to cope with the changes to that exam and have not prepared themselves and their children well enough. Could you outline to the Chamber what steps your government did take to ensure that the profession and the schools were ready for those new exams? Well, as the Education Minister would be able to, to outline, it's, it's uh, clear from the initial uh, findings that this isn't something that happened in every school, far from it. There were some schools uh, that were uh, not affected, some were affected more than others. Why that is, it's something that, the, uh, that, that a review will look at to try and understand why some schools are affected more than others. But with regard to the uh, change in the way that English was assessed, yes, there was, there was more emphasis on spelling and grammar. 
I would expect English teachers to teach spelling and grammar. There's no point being creative in English if you can't spell or use punctuation. You won't get a job by doing that. So I make no apologies for the fact that spelling and grammar have been given greater weighting than before at a time when particularly skills such as oracy are being downgraded in England. I think it's important that children are able to express themselves properly in uh, writing, and I would expect teachers to be able to teach that and produce children who can do just that. With all due respect, again, First Minister, the question I asked you was, could you outline what steps your government had taken to ensure that teachers and schools were prepared for the new exam? And you haven't been able to give me a single action that your government took. Now, the chief executive of the WJEC has gone on to warn that schools may not be ready for the new GCSEs and Welsh Bath that you plan to introduce in September next year. Now, First Minister, whilst poor GCSE results might only be a political hiccup and a bad news headline for you for one day, for the pupils that take those exams, those results will stay for them for the rest of, the, of their lives. Now, you've already ruled out delays into the introduction of those exams. So I will ask you specifically, specifically once again, what steps is your government taking to ensure that teachers and schools are adequately prepared to teach those new exam curriculums so our children get the best possible chance of achieving their potential? What steps are you taking to ensure that happens? First of all, the WGC has a role, of course, as the exams board. It can't just say it's nothing to do with us, Gov. Uh, secondly, uh, I have absolutely uh, no qualms at all in saying the literacy and numeracy tests have been an enormously good thing for children and for parents. There are many, many parents like myself who would for the first time have an understanding of how children are doing on an, in an objective way. Secondly, in terms of English GCSE, it is a matter, of course, for the WJC to communicate the uh, change in uh, weighting uh, to, uh, to schools. But in any event, I expect English teachers to teach English. I expect English teachers to speak, to be able to teach spelling and grammar and punctuation. And I do not accept in any way, shape or form that somehow, because this is a greater part of the English GCSE syllabus, that somehow teachers have been wrong-footed. It is important that teachers teach the basic skills to children. There are schools where that, uh, which have not been affected. There are schools that have been affected. We need to find out why. But I cannot for the life of me understand the tenor of the Lib Dem leaders' views that somehow it's a surprise that teachers of English should be asked to teach spelling and grammar. No, at a question I are a and question three, David Rees. How is the Welsh Government stimulating economic growth in South Wales West? Many ways, of course. First of all, we look at Jobs Growth Wales in terms of what, of what that has done for uh, youth unemployment in Wales. We look, for example, at the job statistics, which show that Wales' unemployment rate is at 7.1%. Uh, the fact that more and more jobs are being safeguarded and created through uh, foreign direct investment, and, of course, the improvement in uh, homegrown entrepreneurship as well. Well, thank you for that answer, Chris Minister, and I welcome the recent figures demonstrating that unemployment across Wales has fallen to 7.1%, and commend the Welsh Government's actually work in this area, and its work in reducing youth unemployment. However, the most recent economic figures have highlighted that the South Wales West region, and my area of Aberavon in particular, has fallen behind the rest of Wales in terms of economic growth and employment. And if you add this to the recent TUC report, highlighted that the average Welsh worker was now over £1,600 worse off in real terms than when before the Tory-led UK government got into power in 2010, there's a clear impact upon our local economy. What more can the Welsh Government actually be doing to stimulate the economic, economic growth and job creation in my area so that we can feel the same as the worldwide wise benefit across and the great economic benefits like this? Well, of course, well, the major employer in uh, the members' constituency is Tata. We have uh, a very good relationship with, with Tata. And you will know, of course, of the visit I made to India, the fact that £800 million worth of investment was announced after that visit into Tata itself. And we know that that investment was needed to turn the steelworks around. Uh, there are many other companies who would have simply abandoned Port Talbot Tata did not do that. They invested the money that was needed in order to provide uh, the uh, steelworks for the future that it, that it needs. Uh, and we're keen, of course, to see uh, that uh, grow and, of course, to see the uh, impressive growth that there's been in youth unemployment, uh, mainly through the use of uh, Jobs Growth uh, Wales, as well as other schemes, of course, that I've mentioned in terms of entrepreneurship and, of course, the uh, good record we have, particularly in uh, foreign direct investment and now, of course, with exports, where we've seen uh, Wales yet again massively outstrip the rest of the UK. Yeah. Yeah. Susie Davis. Yeah. 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 
importance to the Avon Valley of its world-class mountain biking routes, which have helped contribute £3 million a year to the area. Uh, with the infection of larches now effectively out of control in uh, South Wales, uh, we can already see how felling has damaged those uh, forest routes in the Avon. Uh, Welsh Government can commit to funding of speedy and and complete planting of mixed forestry in those areas where felling is taking place to help maintain uh, the tourist economy momentum in South Wales West. Is that a commitment you're able to give today? Well, it's been the case for many years that uh, we expected the Forestry Commission, of course NRW, to uh, plant more uh, mixed woodlands uh, than was the case before. Uh, Woodlands for Wales, the, the strategy that was produced uh, more than 10 years ago, now said just that, that there was a need to ensure that we didn't just see uh, conifers. Yes, they're important, of course, for the, um, for the sawmills, uh, but it's also important that uh, woodlands are seen as an area for recreation. And you talk about the Avon Valley, it's great to say that 20 years ago the forestry was seen as an imposition on the people there. Uh, I, I was able to open the new uh, centre there in Glyn Corrug, again, some 12 years ago now indeed, uh, and I've seen the impact that mountain biking has had. Uh, in terms of areas where there's had to be felling of larch, it's absolutely crucial that when the time is right to do so, when it's safe to do so, that there is further planting, not just of larch, but consideration given to broadleaf species as well. Bethan Jenkins. Uh, First Minister, I asked you around two years ago what your government would be doing to market brownfield land and locked around Port Halbert with the result of the opening of Harbour Way and you said that you would be looking to encourage businesses to invest in that area. Can you give us an, an outline here today what you have done um, between now and the last time I asked you this question? We're working with the Port Talbot uh, Council, of course. We've seen Harbour Way open. Uh, that has opened up an enormous amount of land uh, for potential development in the future, including, of course, part of the, uh, part of the docks. Uh, before the road was opened, of course, it was very difficult to uh, attract anybody in there because of the, uh, the lack of access. But the opening of the road uh, some months ago now uh, certainly uh, will act as a stimulus in order to open up that to, for development, that part of uh, Patalbot, uh, in the area that leads up to the, the southern end of the town centre and beyond. Question for Ellen Jones. Beth yw polisi Llywodraeth Cymru o ran sicrhau gwasanaeth tren amlach o Aberystwyth? Well, ar hyn o bryd, ni'n ystyried y posibilrwydd o wasanaeth trên amlach gan gynnwys gwasanaeth bob awr ar Rhoel Ffordd Canolbarth Cymru. Prif fyny, dod, mae yna ymgyrch gref wedi cael ei sefydlu yn y Canolbarth i ddangos y gwir angen am wasanaeth trên amlach, a mae'r ymgyrch yn ei wedi cyflwyno tystiolaeth i'r, gwyn, uh, i'r gwynidog. Fel chi'n sôn, mae yna um, benderfyniad ar fi'n cael ei gymryd ganddo chi fel llywodraeth ar y wasanaeth hynny. Felly, gael ei gymryd y cyfle i chanog chi i edrych ar pwysigrwydd gwasanaeth trên amlach i Aberystwyth ac o Aberystwyth. Dyna'r unig Reilffordd sydd yn gwasanaethu uh, ceredigion a mae gwir angen i'r Reilffordd yna uh, fod yn gwasanaethu yn amlach na, nag ar hyn o bryd ac hefyd mae gwir angen rhywfaint yn newyddion da ar bobl Aberystwyth ac ar bobl borth ar ôl y geia caled maen nhw wedi wynebu. Iawn. Uh, Wi'n gwybod uh, fe gwrddodd y gwynidog uh, pwyllgor liaison y rhoi'r uh, ffordd o Aberystwyth i amwythig nôl ymysh uh, tachwedd. Uh, mae hi yn cwrdd ar pwyllgor eto y fori er mwyn ystyried uh, ar y gymhellion sy wedi uh, cael ei roi iddi o uh, grŵp gweithredu uh, rhoi'r ffordd y Camryan uh, a gweithodd gwrs bydd na uh, sgwrs uh, ynglyn a pa ffordd mlaen sy'n bosib wrth, go wrth gofio wrth gwrs efallai ariannol uh, gyda'r pwyllgor hynny. Russell George. Um, thank you, President Officer. Please um, excuse my, uh, my poor voice today, First Minister. Um, there is no doubt that an hourly service on the Cambrian line is vital and must happen. However, there are concerns from farmers um, regarding moving livestock from either side of the line, um, as, as this is quite an intensive um, process. Would you be prepared to have discussions with Network Rail or make representations to them in regards to creating uh, stock-proof holding areas uh, close to the boundary of the line to help speed up the, mo the movement? Sorry again about my voice. No, no I, I, I commend the member for his voice there uh, last thing. We've all been in that position. I, I know he raises an important point, uh, and that is, of course, if there are to be more regular services, we hope that there, there will be when the time is, is right and the money is there on the, uh, the Central Wales Railway, uh, that consideration is given to the need to move livestock across the, across the line, uh, where, uh, of course, there are more frequent services, then that does involve... Uh, looking at ways of holding livestock back until the line is, is clear. Uh, and certainly I will ask the, uh, the Minister to write to Network Rail to raise those concerns uh, in order to ensure that there is a, a solution uh, in the future uh, if we do see, of course, uh, more frequent services. 
Question five, Elinid Parrott. Um, what is the Welsh Government doing to increase the use of public transport? Well, we recognise, of course, the importance of effective and affordable public transport in Wales. And as a result of our investment, rail service capacity and passenger numbers, indeed, have seen an expansion. For example, we've seen an increase of approximately 50% in passenger numbers using Arriva Trains Wales services at the start of the, uh, from the start of the franchise in 2003. And indeed, of course, we've seen the reopening uh, over the last uh, decade or two of the Vale of Glamorgan line and the Ebu Valley line. Uh, thank you, First Minister. The South East Wales Metro pro project is obviously a great um, opportunity to encourage people to use public transport, especially in those communities that have limited access to public transport at the moment. And the Stage 1 report has identified the North East Quadrant of Cardiff as the largest area of disconnected communities in the region, a huge population in places like Pentwyn, Pontprenai and so on, um, which have very poor access to either bus or rail. Would you agree with me that connecting those kinds of disconnected communities should be the number one priority for the Metro project? Well, I mean, these are all considerations that can be given to the, to the project. Uh, we welcome, of course, the commitment given by the UK government to pay for electrification of all the valley lines and the uh, main line to Swansea in full, and look forward to that being uh, confirmed in the course of the next uh, few weeks. Uh, it's important, of course, that, uh, that those communities to the east of Cardiff that traditionally have been disconnected from the railway lines because of the way the lines were built originally in Victorian times, uh, are able to uh, access um, regular uh, sustainable public transport, be it rail or bus, in order to make sure that there are viable alternatives for people uh, travelling into the city centre to work other than the car. Christine Chapman. Uh, First Minister, uh, access to reliable public transport is absolutely vital in my constituency, in part due to low car ownership rates. Um, what guidance does the Welsh Government give to bus operators and local authorities to make sure that access uh, to public transport is adequate to the needs of local communities? And as an example, in Penrhyn, but a bus company has suddenly ceased using a bus stop that has been used in use for 40 years. This is causing much anger and this is causing great inconvenience to the elderly and many elderly and disabled residents who use the stop and who now face long walks to access the public transport. Well I'm sure that's an issue of, of concern. Of course it's important that if bus companies decide not to use stops that uh, one is provided as close as possible to the original. Whether it's an issue of the accessibility of the stop, I'm not familiar with it. What I can say is uh, to the member that we, we don't issue guidance to bus operators, but each local authority is responsible for determining, working with the operators and, of course, representatives of passengers, whether local public transport facilities are adequate and appropriate. Where decisions are made as to where to locate a bus stop, it is imperative that local authorities look carefully at the road safety implications for both passengers, of course, and other road uh, users. Uh, but what I can say, of course, to the member is that we do provide financial support to Bus Users Cymru, who can assist or take forward bus passengers' complaints about services with bus services providers and, indeed, with the local authority where appropriate. Uh, and I'd urge those with a concern, uh, going through yourself as a, as a member, to, uh, uh, to contact that body with their concerns. Byron Davis. Uh, to is the First Minister, since becoming uh, an Assembly member, I've tackled the issue, as I'm sure we, we all have, and, uh, have, on how to increase public transport use and ideas to integrate our public transport network and help people get out of the cars. And the one key consideration for, for me is planning to integrate the car into our network. The car is an integral element, uh, like it or not, given the rurality of Wales, to any integrated uh, public transport network. With an eye to the future, uh, I'd like to ask whether your government would explore the feasibility of a, a Swansea Parkway in view of the upcoming electrification investment between Swansea and Neath uh, off the M4 to create a, a significant park and ride, given the immense drift daily <coughs> of people between west to east in the mornings and, of course, return journeys in the evening. The, 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 the difficulty is the member is suggesting a parkway station on the Swansea district line. Uh, which is the um, line that bypasses from Britain Ferry to Pantafunon, uh, if I remember rightly, uh, bypasses Swansea entirely. Uh, that, of course, would need to be electrified uh, in order for it to form part of the passenger service, particularly the intercity passenger service, in years to come. But at the moment, it is used as a diversion line, but if the trains are electrified and that line isn't electrified, it can no longer be a passenger diversion line. So in order for Swansea Parkway to be built, we would need to see a commitment from the UK government to electrify the Swansea district line as well as the main line. David Ellis Thomas. Uh, 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 uh,
Commission recommends the Dan Arwinia Disclare Paul Silk. My Dying Henry Penav or an Cray Kevin Drem Drumney Death and Degrading in Hummery, you board was not Frank Targaver, Hilford, Degogleather, Armers, a ten I river coming of Fredinol, and Carly that can only. I have it, but Hioli the Obuses and Dodden Rim Ilobodrath Cymru. Pamor Vian, a Gatla Preveni dog, Negodi, a Materion Hin, and Treboning Gorbot Disquil, Kin Continuo, Amagosana, I think, to Gredig and my Cymru Yangin. Well, we continue our bit more Ilobodri Quaid and Lina Royfield. I have it in Lina Abbasia, but the way a Brubeth of the Oles Ir Sawadeth and the man here can see that when you get the three Oles for them, Abbasia and Kali Redeg, Ama and Hamri. Of course, the Hun and the Bernie are. Ar fel y mynd San Stefan yr ôl yr etholiad nesa, ond fel llywodraeth bydd yn un gefnogol o'r ddau peth yna. Question 6, William Howell. Llyfan mawr, Llywydd. Will the First Minister please make a statement on the Welsh Government's response to the recommendations made in the Commission on Devolution in Wales, second report published last week? Well, uh, we welcome, of course, the publication of the report. Uh, we hope it will form the basis of a cross-party consensus on the future of devolution in uh, Wales. And, of course, uh, I'm sure we all look forward to the uh, full debate that will be held in this chamber after Easter. I'd like to thank the First Minister for that response. One particular aspect of uh, Silk Part 2 uh, that's of particular interest are those that relate to cross-border health care and the delivery thereof. Um, as you'll be aware, the report proposes that uh, current cross-border arrangements should be strengthened by developing individual protocols between each border local health board in Wales and neighbouring NHS trusts on the English side. Um, this is of particular importance in locations such as Montgomeryshire uh, and Powys more widely, where you have such interdependence on acute hospital services. Um, and in this context, uh, First Minister, given the ability that already exists to put in place some of these protocols to actually enhance um, effective delivery of health care. What measures will your government undertake to bring this forward ahead of any fuller implementation on Silk 2? Well, of course, there are memoranda of understanding that exist uh, between authorities in Wales and authorities in England with a view to delivering uh, health care. They have worked, I think, by and large, very well. Uh, we will, of course, study what the Silk Commission has said in terms of strengthening cross-border uh, arrangements with a view to improving the service, uh, both for those who live in Wales and those, indeed, who live in England. Mike Hedges. Thank you, Presiding Officer. First Minister, since 2011, when this institution first received primary lawmaking powers, we have seen three Assembly Acts referred to the Supreme Court, and I fear that this number will increase in the future. Do you therefore join with me in welcoming the Silk Commission's recommendation that a conferred mo powers model should be replaced by a reserved powers model, as is already the case in Northern Ireland, Scotland and most of Europe, and that th this would make life a lot easier, and that, that this is not adding more powers into devolution, it's just clarifying where we are at the moment? Well, it saves money as well, because of course we know that uh, every time uh, there's a referral to the Supreme Court, there is a cost not just the Welsh Government, but indeed to the UK Government as well. What the Reserve Powers model will do is to clarify the legislative boundaries of this Assembly and indeed the UK Government. That has to be in the interests of, uh, of all. Uh, it's right to say that Schedule 7, as it's presently drafted, uh, is vague, to say the least, in certain areas in terms of competence. And we know, of course, that there are three uh, bills that are either have been referred or have gone through the process of being referred. Uh, that is not the sign of a devolution settlement that is clear, nor is it the sign of a devolution settlement that is sustainable, and the Reserve Powers model would deliver that clarity that I think both Whitehall and ourselves need. Andrew Archie Davis. Thank you, uh, Presiding Officer. Uh, First Minister, on the publication of the Silk 2 report, you were very quick uh, off the blocks to welcome uh, the transfer of criminal, the recommendation of transfer of criminal justice and policing, I believe, or certainly policing anyway. Um, Given the size of this institution uh, and the pressures that are out there this institution, do you not believe that if people do purport for such a change to happen, they should be honest and open and admit that this institution will have to grow and ultimately uh, settle on a figure, I believe Silk 2 was talked of about 80, I think, in its recommendations. So if you're supporting one proposition, you need to support the other proposition. You can't do one in isolation. I, I wouldn't agree with the Leader of the Opposition that one is dependent on the other, that there cannot be transfer of powers via uh, Silk Part 2 unless there is an increase in the number of members in this chamber. It is right to say that this is a small chamber, uh, given the work that it does, and I'm aware 
that backbench members from all uh, parties here work extremely hard, particularly on the, uh, the legislative committees that we, that we have here. I'm not keen, however, to conflate the idea that more powers means more politicians. I think that would be a very difficult uh, idea for the public, uh, particularly to, um, to support, uh, given the fact that they will inevitably see this as an attempt to have more politicians. Although I don't disagree with what he said, I think 80 members would be better as far as this chamber is concerned. Nevertheless, I'm fully aware of the fact that uh, suggesting to the public there should be more politicians without there being a reduction in politicians elsewhere, for example, uh, is, is a very difficult sell. But uh, even though I, I have sympathy with what he said, I would not go so far as to say that you cannot have implementation of Silk Part 2 without an increase in the number of members. I think it is possible to have one without the other. Simon Thomas. Uh, in our commission, an Isle of the Silk, of course, is in Gleeriaun, you have need to start to know the tall a throw on, can vote on a renegwan or pecking a disc, see he vote and duilo, what with Camille Hinebid, can vote silk, a draw supply jet, where the Argamation, Ava the Hina, Pivini dog, and Newid, ban what with Camilla Matanama, a Guisio Gidani at that can only tall a commoda guaita. Well, the thing with the new governor, Dan, of course, on Os. Uh, Mahon Mivon Rubus so, we have to say that the people who are settled in the world are not going to be able to do it. And we have to say that the people who are not going to be able to do it are not going to be I to say that the people who are not going to be able to do so when Kali Dakinoli ne na, she be there throwing and coming and Kali Dali shy and get thrown and shy get. I mean, people in Bushy just been he he way ne na or but on them are the best. We have a man yesterday in New Zealand dress. He is still yet in the world. Question seven, Darren Miller. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Will the First Minister make a statement on Welsh NHS finances, please? Yes, with the additional funding we've announced this year, the NHS will be in a stronger position to meet increasing demand and drive up standards of care. First Minister, as you know, the Wales Audit Office um, has uh, looked at NHS finances a number of times uh, in the past and almost always concluded that there's insufficient resource to be able to balance the books at the year end. And indeed, this year uh, is no exception. An extra £50 million bailout was awarded uh, just a few weeks ago for the Welsh NHS. And whilst extra money uh, is indeed very welcome, of course, the First Minister will know that there's still a £27 million black hole for health boards uh, to uh, meet before the end of this financial year. Will you tell us, will NHS bodies across Wales balance the books in this financial year? And if not, are you going to give them another bailout? We will provide the finances the health service needs. Is he arguing that this money shouldn't be given to the NHS? Yes. Uh, well, he's not. He's not. He clarifies this issue. He is not arguing the money shouldn't be given. Therefore, what is his concern uh, is the point that I would, I would make. One of the things we have not done, of course, is to cut the NHS budget by £20 billion. Pounds. That is what we have not done, uh, and it is something that we would never do. I mean, the major difference at the end of the day between the party on, the, on this bench, I believe the party is on the bench is opposite, and that party over there, is that we believe in the NHS, and they don't. Yeah. Yeah. Julie James. So, First Minister, as you know, one of the issues for NHS uh, Wales finances is the recruitment of doctors. So, First Minister, will you join with me in congratulating Swansea University uh, on becoming uh, an awarder of UK primary medical qualifications from the 25th of February this year, enabling us to train and hopefully retain more doctors in Wales? Yes, indeed I would. Uh, we know that the issue of medical recruitment is a complex one. It's not just about money. It's about enabling hospitals in Wales to provide the right level of training and the right level of expertise for doctors to stay in Wales. They want to go uh, to places where they can see the throughput of cases and they can build up their, their expertise. Uh, and uh, I very much welcome what's been done uh, in, in Swansea, as I welcomed earlier on what was done in Bangor. Uh, and certainly uh, we know that uh, the Welsh NHS is, is building itself a reputation as a place to come and work. And that is something that we need to ensure continues to be the case in the future. 
Alan Fred Jones. Hanner can million Sudicali Glisnoti and Kedergosan at Yehidden and the Juanecol. Arpa Dunodin Calido Sparthi, and Arpa Sila Bid and Calido Sparthi, Ir Guahan over the Yehid or Silangen, a Sail Galu, a Sail Messi, Bush, I Gid Bush or Chevre, Nay Beth. Commisked of it, of course, be the ride either Sparthi or Yan Lina, Sicker High Revenue Blinado. On of course, my rai mana granti and kali roi tia gat pethe inigo ereng left ino pethe na the short dress dwetha al sikar hai bod moya arena mimoni guas iwas nefi author orthopedic ermun sikar hai bod a level o aros and mint laur so we see between the three of half hours between the arena and kasikal i the nithio and a fourth moya faithio. Kirsty Williams. First Minister, Welsh health boards were invited to submit or so sponsor applications for funding through the Health Technologies Fund by the deadline at the end of last month. Could you tell the Chamber how many applications have been received uh, to that fund and when the outcome of that bidding process will be announced? Well, I can't give a figure as to how many have been received. Uh, certainly, uh, it's the case that we have the fund. It's a fund I know that the party has supported. It's a fund, unfortunately, has been removed in England by the UK government. They, they slipped it away uh, from, uh, in terms of their spending at a, at a quiet moment. Uh, but we're very encouraged at the fact that there is such uh, interest, and we know, uh, as, uh, as she will know, that this will benefit many Welsh patients, and I'm grateful for her support. Thank you, First Minister. 